Amen. Look at somebody and say, bad voices. Bad, voices. bad what? You're going to make bad choices if you listen to bad voices. I'm going to start with this story. So what basically happened before I read the story is God called a uh, young prophet uh, in Judah to prophesy to the king. And God gave this prophet orders, this young prophet gave him orders. You go, you prophesy to the king. He said, but then you don't even go back the way you came. You don't stay, you don't eat, you don't drink, you don't nothing, don't fraternize, and then don't even go back the way you came. These were God's orders to this young prophet. And so the Bible tells us in 1 Kings 13 and 11, now there dwelt an old prophet in Bethel, and his sons came and told him all the works that the man of God had done that day in Bethel. The words which he had spoken unto the king, them they told also to their father. And their father said unto them, What way went he? For his sons had seen what way the man of God went, which came from Judah. And he said unto his sons, Saddle me the ass. So they saddled him the ass, and he rode thereon. And he went after the man of God, and found him sitting under an oak tree. And he said unto him, Art thou the man of God that camest from Judah? And he said, I am. And he said unto him, Come home with me, and eat bread. And he said, I may not return with thee, nor go in with thee. Neither will I eat bread nor drink water with thee in this place. For it was said to me by the word of who? The Lord. The Lord. Thou shalt eat no bread nor drink water there, nor turn again to go by the way that thou camest. He said unto him, I'm a prophet also, like you are, and an angel, Rishababa spoke unto me by the word of the Lord, saying, Bring him back with thee into thine house, that he may eat bread and drink water. But he lied unto him. Okay, so we got an old prophet that lied. Now, does that dis did that disqualify him from being a prophet because he lied? No. You're about to find out. Uh-oh. So he went back with him, listened to him, believed the lie, and did eat bread in his house and drank water. And it came to pass as they sat at the table that the word of the Lord came unto the prophet that brought him back. My goodness. The prophet that lied, the Lord is going to use him. Boy, you better keep, look at somebody say, keep your mouth off the man of God. God is getting ready to use this jive guy because he was jive for this where the Lord came unto the prophet that brought him back and he cried unto the man of God that came from Judah now <laughs> this right here saying thus saith the Lord for as much as thou hast disobeyed the mouth of the Lord and hast not kept the commandment which the Lord thy God commanded thee but came his back and has eaten bread and drunk water in the place of the which the Lord did say to thee, eat no bread and drink no water. Thy carcass shall not come unto the sceptre of thy fathers. And it came to pass after he had eaten, that means you're going to die. Came to pass after he had eaten and after he had drank, that he saddled for him the ass to wit for the prophet whom he had brought back. And when he was gone, a lion met him by the way and slew him and his carcass was cast in the way and the ass stood by it and the lion also stood by the carcass this is some story huh hmm. so back in the day good advice and right voices were easier to find anybody remember that day it was easier to find good advice back in the day. You could find the right voices back in the day. You could see the works of a person over what? Time. They didn't just come across your internet feed as a recommendation. You could see their, the works of a person over time and trust their leadership because of their what? Consistency and what? 
track record. First Thessalonians 5 and 12. And we beseech you, brethren, to know them which what? Labor among you. Know them which labor among you. And are over you in the Lord. And admonish you. Know them. Look at somebody and say, know them that labor among you. You could truly know those that labored among you and see their fruit visibly and tangibly back in the day. Some of y'all don't remember that because you're so young. But back in the day, you could really get to know them and know this, these folks got a good track record, got some good fruit over time, been consistent. Amen. Their work spoke for them and their relationship with God was what? Evident, because we only have one evidence. Amen. It's not speaking in tongues. Amen. Amen. Folks want to make speaking in tongues the evidence of everything. Or oh, if he can speak in tongues, that means he's full of the Holy Ghost. That means, it's, no, 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 no. That's not the evidence. The Bible said you will know them by their what? The fruit. And the devil's always trying to destroy the fruit. Because he knows. That's the evidence. Amen? That's why, ABC, that's why you're going to be under attack until Jesus comes. Because there's fruit in here. Is there fruit in anybody? Fruit? Is there fruit in here? Long as there's fruit in here, the spoiled apple is going to try to get in there because one spoiled apple, it only take what? To spoil a bunch of them. Yeah. So you have to be strong enough to understand that. Every one of you are going to be tested. Me and my wife talk about this all the time. Every one of you are going to be tested. Somebody going to call you that had a dream. Yeah. I don't want to hear nobody dream that's mad at the church. That's, that's ridiculous. And when you was here, you didn't have no dream. Don't be telling me about no dream after the fact. Well, I really had it. Don't be trying to time stamp it either. That's some foolishness. But you're going to be tested, and if you go for it, you're going to be replaced. Because obviously ain't nobody leaving without being replaced. Back in the day, you could truly know those that labored among you and see their fruit visibly and tangibly. Their work spoke for them, and their relationship with God was what? It was evident. Luke 6 and 4, for every tree is known by his own what? Fruit. What kind of fruit are around you? What kind of fruit stays around you? What kind of fruit do you create? For of thorns men don't gather figs. Why would I be looking for something good and some thorns? I'm going to get pricked. Nor. Of a bramble bush, do they gather grapes? I'm not reaching in there to get grapes, and it's going to cut my hand all up. In the modern internet age, we really don't know people like that. We just don't. Amen. All these friends you got on friends. People be looking at their friend count and think that that makes them feel good. Need something and go on that friend count and see if you can gather it up. Them folk don't know you. You can't know nobody from a thumbnail. But in the modern internet age, we really do not know people like that. Our opinion of them is usually based on the highlight reel that they post and the words they say. I know what the highlight reel is. You know, you're going to try to play for a team. You get all your best moves together and put, compile them in a video segment. And you send that to whoever, whatever school you just recruit you or whatever. And that, that's your highlight reel. That means all your highlights. You're not going to put every time you lost the ball on it. You ain't going to put when you miss practice. You're not going to put that on there. You're not going to put that on there when folk was draining threes in your face. That don't belong on the highlight reel. Those aren't highlights. Those are somebody else's highlights, not yours. <laughs> yeah, so that's the highlight reel. And that's all the internet is. 
That's why you can't take stock in what's on the internet. People's profile and what they're saying and bragging and what they got and all this. You, don't, don't you let that bother you. I promise you that's the highlight reel. That's the highlight reel. They're putting on there what makes them look good. Matthew 23 and 27. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you are like unto white sepulchers, which indeed appear beautiful outward, but are within full of what? Dead men's bones and of all uncleanness. So you look good on the outside. You got a good highlight reel. But when we get around you, we find out all that, that was nothing but highlights. Because you are low light. You a witch all day and get pretty for the internet. Take the makeup off, you just green. <laughs> yeah, amen. But when God gives us orders for the direction of our lives, we must follow them because only he knows the future and the end of his plan. So when he gives us direction, we have to follow it. Look at somebody and say, follow God. You have to follow it. I mean, I've been praying. I've been trying to hear his direction. Well, have you been listening to the, to the sermons? Because if you plant yourself here, that's how he's going to speak to you. Oh, can I get a hand clap? I, I don't even understand that, man. Yes. Ooh, see the words you preach? Man, you be just on it, man. You just, ooh, just. Then why won't you, won't you do none of it? Why ain't you doing what I said? <laughs> Leave. <laughs> Bro, why would you put yourself under a ministry that, that can't direct you? Amen. Either I'm the man of God or I'm not. Amen. Either I have a word from God or I don't. It's that simple. But only he knows the future and the end of his plan. Proverbs 3 and 6. In how many ways? How much is all? In all thy ways do what? Acknowledge him. And what? He shall direct thy path. In all thy ways. The wrong voices in our lives can interrupt God's plan for us and cause us to get off course based on someone else's desire for us. The wrong voice. The wrong voice can mess your life up. You better pray every day. Lord, whoever's not supposed to be in my life, get them out. Whoever's supposed to be in my life, bring them forth. Because I can't do this. I'm not smart enough. I will get it wrong every time. Get them out of my life, Lord. Proverbs 13 and 20. He that walketh with the wise man shall be what? Is that difficult to understand? Is that complicated? If you walk with the wise men, you're going to be what? Wise. But a companion of fools shall what? <laughs> Y'all, I don't want to be around no fools. No old goofy stuff. Spiritually goofy. I'm People can lead you astray because they have issue with you or who you are following. Yeah. What makes people have issues with you? Jealousy. Envy. See you happy. And they're not. That makes folk have a problem with you and you don't even know it. They can see Jeff sitting here with Tangi and her hair all <laughs> down and her arm around his and just looking, you know, and they got a problem with that. Because their old crusty husband won't put his arm around. <laughs> and they just have a problem. I mean, really, have a problem and stir up foolishness. You picked him. You pick that crust. That's your crust. Why are you, why are you hating on Jeff? Jeff over here minding his own business. 
but they see that and it just make them jealous. And that envy comes up. And they come and they smile at him, smile at his wife, but inside that's bothering them. What's bothering them? Their happiness. Happiness bothers you? Since when did happiness start bothering you? I know I'm preaching. Y'all can look like you want to look. I said turn the lights out so some folk can duck on out. Yeah, man, duck on out of here. That's some foolishness. You can't be hating on folks and go to heaven. You're not going to be able to be jealous of folks in heaven. He think he's something. We all something. We in heaven. How'd you get up here? <laughs> Look at it, all on them streets of gold. Like they just here. They are here. They are. <laughs> Lord, that's a mistake up here. <laughs> God don't make no mistakes. He's going to handle that right here. Amen. Right here. Heaven don't have no, look at somebody say, heaven don't have a ghetto. <laughs> Everybody's the upper class in heaven, John. Amen. Ain't no social class, ain't no social, uh-uh. Amen. But <laughs> because they are unhappy, they desire for you to fail. Because they are unhappy. They desire for you to fail. Proverbs 21 and 24. Proud and haughty scorner is his name, who dealeth in what? Proud wrath. The enemy will bring voices in your life to rehearse your pain and tap into your offenses. So what was brewing inside of you, the devil is going to bring just the right voice out of all these people in here. 500, 100, 500 people. Somehow, some way, magically, mysteriously, the wrong voice is going to find you. Shaking all these hands, talking to all these people, and then, bam. Pastor, he, yeah, pastor, he preach a good word. Yeah, he preach a good word, but sometimes, huh? Sometimes what? You know, sometimes I think he take his jokes a little too far. You know what? He sure do. What y'all doing this Friday? Because you, you got to get together to talk about it. I mean, that's a whole three, four week conversation. Get together and start talking about it. Then that turns into, well, yeah, you know, and that's some other things folks been saying. Mm-hmm. And then I heard. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then it just, then you in here and I'm preaching. And you're looking at me like, And through the spirit, I can see right through it. I see your venom. I see your fangs. That's some things them them cobras have. But it hood. I see your hood. You can't hide it. I hear your rattle. You can't hide. How dare you? See, you you pass crazy to think you're going to come in here. And God is not going to show me and my wife what you doing. You crazier than crazy. We just turn our glasses over, but we know, we know your time is short. Yeah, because you can't do that. And the reason why is because God is looking to protect these young kids. Amen. Some of us, our cake is already baked, but these kids are still developing. And God wants to protect them. I told y'all several years ago, I was talking to, I forgot who I was talking to, but remember when I told y'all? What was going to end the world? I said, when this happens, it's going to be the end. Y'all remember? 
What did I say? When they come for the what? The kids. When they come for the kids, it's a wrap. And what are they doing now? Yes. Getting them at home. Coming for the kids. All this pedophilia that's going on that the, they're trying to hush and keep quiet. All these rings and different things that's getting busted out and all this stuff. They're coming for the kids. When you come for the kids, the future is, is wiped out and God, Jesus is going to come back. It's nothing left. And so it's our job here at ABC to protect these children. Amen. We, we don't want your venom getting on them. I can handle you. You know, we, we, I, I can handle you. But these children can't. Amen. So let God purge. Amen. You got to let God do what he's going to do. Your unresolved issues will be manipulated by the enemy to throw you off the course God has put on you. So this is a constant issue with you. And you have to address it. Amen. You, everybody in here know when they crazy. And you know when you wild. And, and you know when you sensitive to this and sensitive to that. And you, you, don't you know you? And I tell you, you have to learn to call yourself out in prayer. If you can't call yourself out in prayer, you're not being real with God and he's not listening to you. God listens to you being real. Okay, if he can see through you, he made you, he knows everything that's in you, you better call it out. Lord, I'm jealous. I get jealous of folks. I get jealous. Lord, I get mad when they're happy. I want the stuff that they have. I just don't understand. Why am I like that, Lord? I need you to help me with that. Remove that from you have to be that honest to God. How are you going to come before the Lord with that in you? Oh, God, bless everyone. Bless those, yes, bless those that have and those that have not. And God is looking at you like, you don't care. If I bless them, you're going to be upset. Oh, I, I know I did. Who said that? Tell me. I need some encouragement because focus. That's what folk looking, you know, the red eyes is on me. You know, you start busting up stuff, the red eyes start shining. But yeah, you, you know, if God, if you're not going to let God truly deal with you, then what are you talking to him about? Now I'll lay me down to sleep. You can't pray that during the day. It's 11 a.m. Now I'll lay me down to sleep. Riyaba. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. That's all you got to say? Because you won't be real with God. Lord, I need to pay this rent. This rent is due, God. I don't know where I'm going to get it. Why are you praying that when you bought the house? You shouldn't have bought it. You bought it to show off on Instagram. God knew that. God was like, I ain't giving you nothing to that house. You shouldn't have bought it. So you can have a post. being real. Okay, Lord, I bought this house because I wanted to show off. Sister so-and-so was getting on my nerves showing her house. And I bought it. My husband said no, but you know I'm Jezebel, Lord. You know I override his authority. And I need some help, Lord. Mm -mm, Uh-oh. Uh-oh, step in something on that. I got to take my shoe off and clean it. Yeah. Yeah, you know, Lord, I mean, I'm not, like, I'm not the forward Jezebel. I'm the manipulative one. I just do little things. But, yeah, to make him do things. And I need deliverance from that. That's how you, you get before him. Be real. Look at somebody and say, be real. Be real with God. Be real with God. You don't think he knows you? Just got through secretly smoking a black and mild. <laughs> Choking while you're trying to pray. You're just coughing. Oh. <laughs> Lord, see this COVID. <laughs> this COVID, Lord, I rebuke this COVID. In Jesus. Th- Who are you talking to? God is not your homeboy. 
God looking at you. Look at your lips. That ain't no COVID. issues <laughs> look at somebody and say be real. be real you gotta be real you gotta be real I'm gonna tell you when you really need to be real too when you trying to pray and you and your, your wife or your husband you just done acted a fool with them and you trying to just pray up to them and sound spiritual you better go apologize and set that straight. The Bible says when you stand before me praying, forgive that your prayers will be heard. God don't want to hear you faking for them, trying to scare your husband. Why you praying? Oh Lord, oh you, you, you know, you kill folks for this back in the Bible. <laughs> Folks, folks was dropping dead, Lord. They was dropping dead. I don't know if it's a fire. But spare him, Lord. Spare him. You're the God of mercy. But folks was dying for this. You kill folks in Jesus' name. <laughs> what? sorry repent make it right before you address the Lord amen getting in the prayer, prayer closet and leaving the door cracked but your unresolved issues will be manipulated by the enemy throw you off, off the course God has put you on 1 Peter 5 and 8 be sober be vigilant because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, does what? Walketh about doing what? Looking for your weakness. He's looking for your weakness. He's walking about trying to find that thing that he knows he can get you with. And like I said, out of all the people in here, that lion is going to come to you. Set up camp in your life. Blessings of the Lord on your life will anger people and cause them to say things to you in an attempt to change your course. Just because you're blessed. Just because you're blessed. Just because you're blessed. Listen, let me tell y'all something about the Lord. You know, and I, you know, my mom, I learned this growing up. My mom and dad, you know, you, you don't look at what people have and try to judge people by what they have because you don't know how they got it. And another thing you never look at, you never look at God's calling on somebody's life, questioning it, because you don't know why God called that person. And you're not the judge of whether or not that person should be called. God has judges and he raises up those that should do that, but you don't do that. That ain't your place to do that. You let Christ do that. Amen. So you don't get mad and think somebody isn't called because then you might blaspheme. Yeah. Oh, a few hand claps. That's all right. I know I'm telling the truth. You can't judge the call on somebody's life. And you can't get mad because it wasn't you. Don't you understand? When you get upset that somebody got used instead of you, that's the very reason it wasn't you. It ain't going to be you until you don't want it to be you. But 
Look at somebody and say, God knows what he's doing. God knows you're going to quit before you even get going good. He knows your weaknesses. He knows you crazy. He knows you can't handle that level of anointing. He knows you can't lead nobody. You can't lead your own house. Blessing of the Lord on your life will anger people, though. They'll get jealous. Just like the old prophet in the book of 1 Kings, they will lead you to your demise if you follow their opinions. Yeah. This old prophet came to the young prophet and convinced him to do something against God's orders. Now you feel like God led you here, right? I'm talking about ABC. Either he did or he didn't. So if he led you here, then somebody going to come tell you you shouldn't be? Well, in the book of Kings, that didn't end well. But he was an old prophet. He was an old lying prophet. Amen. I'm, Y'all, I'm enjoying this. This is wonderful to me. You look how you want to look. Just like the old prophet in the book of Kings. They will lead you to your demise if you follow their opinions. Psalms 120 and 2. Deliver my soul, O Lord, from what? From lying lips. This needs to be your prayer. Lie, deliver me from lying lips. Say it every morning. Deliver me, Lord, from lying lips. A lot of times God going to say, okay, then stop talking. <laughs> Oops, it's me. <laughs> Take them away, Lord. There's nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. Let God bless your lips so you'll stop lying. Deliver me from lying lips even if they're mine and a deceitful tongue even if it's mine. Can you pray that prayer? God knows when I'm coming before him, it's going to be, the, the, oh, I'm telling him everything. I don't have a problem being real in front of the Lord. But deliver me from lying lips and a deceitful tongue. Because I don't want to be confused. And I don't want the wrong voice in my life. Most bad choices that people make are caused by a bad voice. It only takes one. A bad voice in their life. Luke 6 and 39. And he spake a parable unto them. Can the blind lead the blind? So a bad voice... How are things going to end up? Bad! The Bible says they shall, won't they both just fall in the ditch? A bad voice is a bad voice. And it always causes you to make a what? Bad choice. Bad voices always have bad track records to prove their inconsistency. This ain't their first rodeo. This is the first time they said it. I think first time they've done it. Yeah, you need to start checking history. Mm-hmm. Have a track record. Bad voices always have a bad track record. Yeah, they're always trying to make it look like it was somebody else's fault. Well, see, that situation, what happened was, that you, mm, that's all the situation. It's always somebody else's fault. Bad voices always have a bad track record to prove their inconsistency. Before you ever follow the advice of someone that is trying to steer you through words, dreams, visions, etc., you should check their what? Consistency. Amen. God is big about proving his true messengers and their fruit. The young prophet followed the words of an older prophet just because he said it was okay to. The older prophet went against God's words, and this is why he did it. Uh, went against God's words to the younger prophet just to get some clout and look good in the eyes of his sons. God didn't use him to speak this word. Oh, I wish somebody was with me. God didn't use the old prophet. He didn't use them, skip right over them, use the young prophet. So the old prophet was like, okay, you know, folk, you know, no, folk know me. They know me. 
folk know him. They know what I'm capable of. They know what I do. So he needed his sons to go find the young prophet, bring him here, because if he's with me and we're talking and eating and folks going to attribute the work that he just did and word he just spoke, he's going to attribute it to me. Because that's my, you know, you know, we together. And that's why God said, don't go. If I wanted to use him, I'd have used him. If I wanted him to have some clout, I'd have let him have some clout. Amen. Oh, them dragging hand clout. That's all right. You better quit trying to get next to folks to get some clout. Amen. Don't be joining this church to get clout. I go to the EX ministry. The, 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 the truth of the then one day I shall record in the studio. God has already given me the background part. But the song is not written, but he's already given me the background. You don't understand how God works with me. I already had a background part for J. Brown's next album. CR3. You don't understand. You, you don't understand. I already have the parts. Obviously God knew this and directed the young prophet to stay his course and avoid going with the older. God was trying to protect him. There are so many that are desiring clout on the internet and social media. Oh, can we just stop right there? Let's just stop right there. We're just going to pause for station identification. I don't even have nothing to say. I, that's the thing I hate worse about the, the, the internet. Mental illness can flourish, and you don't even know they're mentally ill. You really think they have a word? You really think they're smart? You think they know something? Everything. And then you meet them, you're like, boom, 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 boom. This dude is mentally ill. They will try everything to get views and likes. Everything. That's how a girl was throwing chairs off of a skyscraper to get views and likes. Off her balcony for views and likes. Guys throwing cement, uh, what do you call those things? Cinder blocks off an of, off of overpass to get views and likes. Filming it. Because when you're, when you're real, when reality, when your reality is terrible, it's in disarray, it's messed up because you just keep making bad choices. You have to use the internet to look better. The highlight reel. You want to convince people that you're something that you're not. I'm not getting any amen, boy. Somebody must be convicted. That's all right. They'll do anything for views and likes, man. Like me, view me, like my page, view my page. They will try to lead you away from God's plan for you and your family just to get your views and comments. Without having a good track record, good fruit, or any type of consistency, they still give advice and say, thus saith the Lord to you. They have dreams, powerful dreams and visions about you. Powerful! Detailed, details just to the, oh my gosh, just to the finite. Oh, they know everything. Have these dreams and visions about you, but their dreams and visions can't help their own life. You ain't never dreamed about yourself. You didn't dream that you was going to do the fool. You should have saw that. They see everything about your future, but couldn't foresee mask wearing global pandemics and Middle East peace treaties. Right, you know everything. You know the color shoes I'm going to wear in the future, and you couldn't see the whole world walking around with masks on. In this last hour, more and more false readings, because that's all they are. They're readings, psychic readings advisors and spiritually goofy folks will rise up according to the Bible. He said it was going to happen in the last day. You must be able to block and delete these types of people or you will be what? You're going to be led astray. Our time is short and we are almost at the end of all we are almost at the end of all things. They are set to bring peace to the Middle East. That's going to be one of the greatest significant time stamps of our time. 
according to the Bible. Peace. Treaty. Our time is short and we are almost at the end of all things. Do not allow the devil to take your baton before you cross the finish line. Finish the course, stay in the race, and silence the voices that want to cause you to make what? Bad choices. 2 Corinthians 13, 11 and 13. For such are false prophets, deceitful workers, listen to this, transforming themselves into what? Into the apostles of Christ. So they're false apostles, deceitful workers, and they transform themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. The devil masquerades as a good person sometimes. Therefore, it's no great thing if the ones he's using can be transformed as the ministers of righteousness whose end shall be according to what? Their works. Everybody stand to your feet. Y'all, we are at the end. Y'all know it's the end? It's the end. And so at the end, things are going to just get rougher and rougher. You're going to be constantly tested. I know you're saying, why do I have to be tested to just come to church? Why is it a battle? Why is it a fight? Why is there an issue? What is going on? Well, the devil knows. He knows that there is power in the collective gathering and fellowship of believers. Amen? And you get strength from this. And relationships that are made, good ones that are made, you get strength from. You get admonishment with, uh, from. You get admonishment. You get encouragement from. And so the enemy's going to come and he's going to try to stop that with all that he has. And it's not to get you, it's to get your children. That's who he wants. But we're going to serve the devil notice. Every time we talk to the Lord, we need to serve the devil notice. Keep your hands off my stuff. Amen? My children my marriage, my money, even the money I don't have yet. Keep your head. Amen. Amen, because I'm in it to win it, and I want to see the end of this thing. Amen. Everyone bow your heads. Father God, I just thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for this word. We thank you, Father God, because for the last two weeks, we've just dealt with people in our lives and people that the enemy is bringing in our lives and bad voices and bad friends and all of these folks that have picked just the worst time in the history of our world to begin to just wow out and fight against you. Father God, we just come before you even right now asking for your protection. Protection for our ears. Protection for our hearts. Protection for our minds, God. And most importantly, protection for our children. Father, we stand in the doorway of our homes to protect our children from the things that we went through. Father God, we just stand with them to protect them, Father God, so they don't have to go through a lot of the things that we went through. Help us to be strong in our homes. Help us, Father God, to stand against the wiles of the devil. Help us, God, to stand against the enemy's plan and help us to stand against bad voices. Father, every voice, any voice that is not of you, take it out of our lives right now. Come on, everyone, just lift your hands. Father God, this is a surrender. I surrender it. I don't care how much I like them. I don't care how much I want them around me. I don't care what they meant to me, what they did for me. It doesn't matter. If they don't belong, if that voice doesn't belong, take it away, Father God. Take that away. Father God, so there'll be no added pressure in my life, God. So there be no uh, 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 tongue rising up against your plan for me, God. That this person will not lead me astray. But Father, take them away and replace them with the right voice or re 
most importantly, God, replace them with your voice. Your voice, God. You lead and direct my life. Father God, I don't want to be anywhere you don't want me to be. I don't want to be a part of anything you don't want me a part of. I don't want to be listening to anyone you don't want me to listen to. So, Father God, right now, just transparently, we stand before you asking, God, that you will sort our lives out. Every person that shouldn't be, take them away. No matter what I want, no matter what I feel, I need. I know, Father God, that your blessing is behind that. And once they're removed, your blessing will come. So I pray right now, God, I pray that right now for my life and all that are under the sound of my voice, God. Take them away and add those that should be added. Even in this church, God, take them away and add that that should be added. And if nobody it should be at it, we take chairs out of here. Whatever you, this is your church. So however you want it, that's the way we want it. And we'll trust you and give you the glory and honor knowing that you know what is right for us. And we give you glory and honor. And God, I pray right now against the spirit of fear. I pray against the spirit, Father God, of anyone that is sick. I pray against sickness, Father God. I pray for healing in everyone that needs its bodies, Father God. We pray for healing right now. And we pray against the spirit of fear. And speak against it, Father. Every cold, every sneeze, every cough is not COVID-19. We rebuke that spirit right now. <laughs> Father God, when we gathered for the first time in this building after we were outside, it was spoken in here. That not one person, not one ABC person, not one person that you've called the ABC will perish because of this 5G virus. It's not going to happen in here. So we speak against that right now, God. Keep us safe from harm. Keep us mentally strong. Even when we're talking to those that are fearful, keep us strong in the faith that we have. And we give you glory and honor for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated.